in the Circuit Court of the 18th Judicial Circuit in and for Seminole County, Florida, State of Florida versus George Zimmerman. Verdict, we the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. So as almost all of you probably know by now, a Florida jury has found George Zimmerman not guilty for his killing of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. But the George Zimmerman not guilty verdict in the murder case that has consumed much of this country. Judge Deborah Nelson thanking the six members of the uh, Seminole County jury that has just acquitted George Zimmerman on second-degree murder charges. You know, uh, when uh, Trayvon Martin was first shot, uh, I said that this could have been my son. Uh, another way of saying that is uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. There are very few African Americans who haven't had the experience of getting on an elevator and a woman clutching her purse uh, nervously uh, and holding her breath until she had a chance to get off. Racial profiling, not only in today's society, but historically, has been an issue in America. Um, many people have been able to shield themselves away from the reality of the fact that racial profiling is ongoing and um, pervasive. I know that in the skin that I'm in, as an African-American woman, uh, parent, wife, grandmother, I have to socialize my my son, my husband, my uh, grandson differently because of the way I fear, what the, how I fear for their dark skin every time they step out of the door. Last year, as part of our documentary, No Justice, No Peace, we took to the streets to ask what people thought about the Trayvon Martin issue. You know, and, and God didn't have no right to follow him like that. Like, you know, he called the cops, and I'm pretty sure the cops told him to stand down. He follows him, and, and does, it takes, his, it takes like, action into his own hands, like, you know. Dude got followed? Yeah, he got followed. Man, that's crazy. He was on the phone with his girlfriend at the time. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. I know, it's pretty messed up, right? I think that this happens every day. Like, the things up in, like, I don't know where it was, like, up near Redding, where three Mexican people were shot. And the people were let go. It's the same thing, and it happens everywhere over the country. It's just this one black kid gets shot in Florida, and now the whole country and Obama's speaking about it, where every day it happens, and people are being let go. No, she just wants to be retarded. And he was wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I got you. Because he was wearing a sweatshirt and a hoodie, he fit a stereotype of being a thug because, like, people dress that way, trying to hide something. White people who live in the suburbs particularly have no contact with uh, black or brown people other than what they see on television or read in the newspaper. Think that all young black or brown people are engaged in crime, which is ridiculous because we all know that's not true, but they assume that based on what they see in the newspaper or sometimes see on TV. We aren't the only ones working with this issue. Six months ago, teens in San Francisco at BayVac created this remix showing how media coverage impacts people's perceptions of race. Live. We begin with breaking news. This is ABC7 Breaking News. We begin tonight with breaking news. Following some breaking news. Beginning with breaking news. Breaking news. A very vague description, only that they're black males and were wearing black hoodies. He was wearing a black uh, hooded sweatshirt. A black hoodie. Black man with a black hoodie. Over a black hoodie. Check this one out. He's dressed in a black hoodie. Just in black pants and a black hoodie. Black pullover hoodie. And a hooded sweatshirt. Black hoodie. Wearing black from head to toe. A black hoodie. He was wearing a black hoodie. At a convenience store wearing his black hoodie, buying candy. But the only description we have is uh, an armed uh, black man wearing a black hoodie. They were wearing hoodies, so the description isn't too detailed. That's so talked about black hoodie, now with an ominous bullet hole near the chest. Police do not have a more detailed description of that suspect. We interviewed 17 people, and only one person believed that justice was served. Uh, can you say that again? Uh, I didn't really follow the case, but the, I support the way the justice system works, and I wouldn't want to change anything about it. He was proven innocent. Like. Okay. The African American community is looking at this issue through uh, a set of experiences and a, and a history that uh, that doesn't go away. 
Well, you know, you almost have to think that it, it's an intentional conspiracy, that it is by design that we are uh, dummying down the ability of people on both sides to think critically about what's happening in the world. Um, but on the plus side, I see a lot of people coming and for maybe for the first time, really uh, standing out and putting their beliefs out in public. When do we want it? Demonstrations are scheduled today in 100 cities, including New York, Miami, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Philadelphia. All of this after the Florida jury found the former Neighborhood Watch volunteer not guilty in the death of Trayvon Martin. Today we came out as a community to support the Martin family on this um, act, um, not to just about Trayvon Martin, but all boys across the country um, to come as a community to tell the people that in Tallahassee, in this world, even our president recognizes the fact that um, um, the stand ground law needs to be shut down. We loved him. We supported him. We cared for him, just like you do your kids. Today it was my son. Tomorrow it may be yours. The main thing is, is that they really want to put pressure they want to put pressure on the Department of Justice to really look into civil, possible civil rights violations that George Zimmerman might have had when he shot Trayvon Martin. Could you imagine what would have happened if Barack Obama had gotten cut down at an early age? He wouldn't have been the first black president. We've got to stop our children getting cut down at an early age. We have moved on from the verdict. Of course we're hurting. Yeah. Of course we're shocked and disappointed. Yeah. But that just means that we have to roll up our sleeves and continue to fight. Yeah. Now we are no longer waiting on the verdict. Now what are we going to do? We have a verdict. What now? Well, our next step is to channel our attention to the foundation. So people have some place to go if they're victims of senseless gun violence. If they need to change the laws that we all know need changing. On Saturday, July 20th, to protest the Trayvon Martin verdict, over 100 cities across America held rallies, including our very own Allentown, Pennsylvania. We interviewed people of all races and ages about race issues in the United States. extent does racial profiling affect you in your daily life? On my daily life, <clears throat> just being a black person, many times I see, you know, I see it. I see it a lot. I can I can walk by and I hear somebody, you know, just because I'm coming by, lock their doors in the car real quick, just lock them, you know? At the end of the day, I'm a gang member. No matter what, I'm a gang member. Yeah. So it affects me because I look at it like it, it's not even a gang thing. It's more of my skin tone before anything. Because like just skin like right now, nobody would never know because I'm not, not calling the scene, I'm not doing nothing. But my skin tone alone, it, 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 it's worse. It's worse than the colors I wear, basically. In one way or another, you see somebody walking past you, a lady walking past you, and all of a sudden she hold a perch. You get on the elevator with somebody, they move back. Then you're going to do something. So it's, a, it's a natural response. I don't pay it no mind. They have a problem, not me. as alive and well as it was 50 years ago, um, plain and simple. You know, when uh, black or Latino folk might be around, a white person, they might not say certain things, but when that black or Latino person leaves the room, they will go on. It's alive and well, I'm telling you. I don't think it would never, never disappear. Because, see, you got people, you got all kinds of people in this world. You know, you got all kinds of people that believe in so many different things. Yes, right. But what I want to say to us as a community, 
We need to rally our young people together to make their statement and to take their stand for the injustice has, that has been done against Trayvon Martin. I think we've come a long way. I really do. We've made a whole lot of progress, and it's mostly because of the younger people, the younger generations that's coming up. For once, uh, if we can figure out how to have courageous conversations about race and its impact on both sides of the fence, um, that we may be able to figure out together how we can create a uh, country that, that is not based on race, that it does not uh, divide according to skin color, where people, uh, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, can be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. Um, we ha again, it's an opportunity, and whether or not we have the courage to seize the opportunity and to make it something that will not be swept under the rug, um, my hope is that America, for the first time, will have a um, resurgence of will, skill, and courage to begin to say no more. Racial profiling is an important issue. People gain nothing from racially profiling other people. Racial profiling affects everyone every day. Although progress has been made, our country still has a long way to go. Racism will not go away by itself. What are you going to do about it? Let it